Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, we're gonna do a little unboxing. I've never done an unboxing before, but I've uh, broke down and bought me a hazard fraught bandsaw kit. Uh, you can see the stuff on the side of it there. And we're gonna do a little bit of unboxing on this. You can see on the end there, it is SKU number 6419 10 amp portable metal bandsaw. Well, maybe you can't see that. Anyway, let's get her open. Uh, piece of junk must be made in Canada. Anyway, saw won't start, so let's open this up and pretend that, you know, we got some sense and we're not Canadian to mining act. And this thing is much heavier than I thought it was. The uh, FedEx man, he did a good job hunting it to the front door. That's a fairly well-built case. Yeah, not bad, you know. This thing was about half the price of uh, what a Milwaukee was. And I'm not going to use this just every day. And I'm also going to make some modifications on this that will avoid any kind of warranty. So I didn't want to void the warranty on a Milwaukee. You know, if you're going to catastrophize something, catastroph wow, that's a lot heavier. Catastrophize something that's cheap. And this thing is a lot heavier than what I would have imagined. That's aluminum. That's aluminum. That's aluminum. Man, about the only thing that's plastic on this is the handle. Wow. So just for the sake of argument, let's see what this thing weighs. The box says net weight 16 pounds, so that's, and it's, it's heavy. Well, I'm reading 15 pounds and 10 ounces, and for you metric folks, that would be one stone a pound and 10. So, you know, the thing looks to be Pretty well built for half the price of Skilwaukee. Got nice, got roller bearings everywhere. Ooh, the rubber tires are actually on a, uh, they look replaceable and they're actually on a track. They're like, uh, almost like timing belts turned inside out. Kind of neat. Not just glued on. So let me put a blade on this thing and uh, see how she runs. Well, I guess I ought to read the fantastic manual. Uh, let's see, to avoid danger of suffocation, keep this plastic bag away from babies and children. Do not use bag in cribs, carriages, or play pens. So I guess if you want to protect your playpen from slobber and drool from your children, you should probably just paint it with some lead-based paint. Oh, looky there, got you a spare set of brushes, a little bitty one-use Allen wrench, that's pretty nice. Uh, this is the model number, 1678-Echo-Bravo. I don't know what that means. It takes a... A 44 and 7 8 blade, and I got the 24 tooth blades. This thing don't come with blades, you got to buy them separately, but that's no big deal. Uh, 24 tooth blade, I'm going to be primarily using this for cutting uh, uh, 
S-lock and drive width. So it's 26 gauge sheet metal or 24 gauge. It's, you know, really lightweight sheet metal. So you need a real fine blade to cut that without just tearing things all to thunder. I am tickled that they sent another pair of brushes. Okay, I've got my brushes on there. I haven't read the instructions, but I did figure out how to put the blade on. And you pull this thing, this is the bang switch. It does have a throttle over here on the side. I'm just going to leave it turned up to maximum. I'm not cutting aluminium or anything like that. I'm cutting steel, so I don't think I'll foul the blade any. And this is a bundle of 10 pieces of S-lock, uh, 24, 26 gauge, something like that. Uh, if you don't know what S-Lock is, I've got a video on making your own S-Lock. This is store-bought, ready-made. So let's see if she'll cut. This thing is loud, I'll tell them that much. Kind of smells like, I don't know, forced labor camps or something like that. I'm sure it's made in China. Come on, baby. Focus up. Well, there's as good as I can get it to focus. The cuts are reasonably good. Uh, typically, if I use a hacksaw or a, a sawzall to cut these, the the entry and the exit is all jaggedy. And but these cuts are good. I don't think I would really have to polish them up much on the belt belt sander. Uh, I mean, they got some burrs on them, but with that twenty four tooth blade, that's that's actually a, a very good cut. I'm kind of impressed. Okay, this is what's left over from an old cream separator. Now, I'm not responsible for this. I bought this from a buddy of mine who is a dealer of all things collectible, rare, and precious. Uh, really nice guy. I don't know where he comes up with his crap at, but... He's got tons of it uh, and makes money doing it, selling junk, buying junk, selling junk. But anyway, this is a cream separator base or the, the guts of a cream separator. The big, all the, this is what I got. It's just a, the casting. Everything else is long, long gone. But what I intend to do here is use this nice, heavy, probably 70 or 80 pound cast iron base to mount this tool on. I'll probably have it up here about, oh, four inches above my belly button. That seems to be a pretty comfortable working height for me on a, on a bandsaw. But I want it to, uh, I'm gonna make me a table to where I can uh, just kind of slide this saw into a table and uh, a couple or three bolts. I may have to do some beefing up here. These are pretty small very small bolts, like four millimeter bolts right here. And there's only two of them. So I'm going to figure out some way to build a table and some means by which to attach this to said table to where I can quickly remove it because this is just too easy, too nice to have it in a vertical mode like this with a fixed table for cutting stuff like, uh, well, like that S lock and drive stuff and, and stock and things like that. It's uh, it just would be a whole lot easier for me to cut my 10 piece bundles into chunks mounted like this than clamp them in a vise and have to handle them more. So anyway, that's a future project coming up before too long. Let's dig something else out of the junk pile and see how well it cuts other stuff.
Okay, this is inch and five eighths aluminum, round. Uh, I don't know what grade it is. It came from the junkyard. The end of it's painted blue. That's what grade it is. It's end painted blue grade. And now, a 24 tooth blade is way too fine of a blade to cut something this big and this soft with. I'm going to turn my speed down quite a bit. And I am going to use a little bit of oil on this. cut it straight but that's more my fault than the blades and using the oil on it probably wasn't the best thing I could have done to that blade and everything but I just can't use that fine of a blade in something as soft as aluminum without putting a little oil on it let's find something else to whittle Okay, this is eighth wall by a three-quarter inch angle armor. Let's see if she'll cut. Hey, that's a pretty good cut. I think I can turn the speed back up. Well, there is some stinky stink coming off of it. That may have been because I was loading it so hard. See if I can do something on the 45 degree angular variety here. Well, I could if my cork wasn't too damn short. about all I got to say about that. Seems like it's a pretty good piece of equipment. I don't know. Ask me in a year. I'm not going to take it all apart and do scientific analysis of all the ghibli bits in here. I don't care about them. All I care is I pull that one bang switch and it goes boom, 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 and that's, that's all that matters to me. It does seem like it's a pretty good piece of equipment for a hundred dollar bill. So, you know, can't complain so far. Hope life's been treating y'all good. Y'all drive safe. Watch for deer.